I learned or what I saw in the field, I can describe it as individualistic. When you talk of gender parity, gender inequality, or what have you, the lady was determined despite all that. So sometimes you look at this thing from an individualistic point of view, despite all the odds, are you determined to get there? She didn't relent. She didn't. She was quite determined and she was sort of aggressive. She was aggressive. Even when her father was trying to sort of like discourage her or something, point out some, when the father was trying to point out some flaws in her, what? She wasn't, um, she wasn't deterred. She was determined to succeed. So when we're talking about gender parity, at least I have something to take home here, you need to be determined, despite all odds. Don't let anything work against you. I mean, whatever. I mean, take it as a learning curve. Move on. Sorry, yeah, okay. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, the movie, like you said, Big Time it brought back memory about when I was in uni, my second year. My lecturer called me and said, you're the only girl out of 62 guys. You're studying geophysics. Why not go for microbiology? Why not go for different annoying courses? I told him I made my decision. I was quite young. I left uni at 18, that's six years ago. That's when I finished uni, I took a five-year course. So, even in my third year, then outside that, my teacher didn't want to see me with some other female professors. I was young, I sat in the middle. They said, Hilda, we are talking to you as your parents. We don't think you think this is for you, you girl. I was upset. And then when my dad was beside me, I was determined and I went to the first class. The most dominant message I got from the movie was the power of women, if all barriers are broken down. By barriers here, yeah, I mean towards the end of the movie, we saw that even the government had to weigh in. At the point, they had to go and lobby the secretary to the president. And by the time they supported them, we could see the power of women in play. And um, now, in general, as for us here in Nigeria, even in the whole world. I think to close the gender inequality, everybody has to be involved. Individuals, policymakers, government, judiciary, and all. I see a strength, a strength in a woman. In spite of her ill health, she had this driving force within her that pushed her out. She was so determined against all odds, against um, having to care for her father, care for the home. She had this, she had this thing in her that she must succeed because if she doesn't, a lot of things will be at stake. The job for thousands of people. And so we have this Strengthen us. Give a woman a seed, she turns it into a child. Yeah. Give a woman a house, she turns it into a home. Yeah. Give her money, and she builds a world. From the movie, I saw a whole lot of things. And, uh, permit me to say, I saw a typical, she's not African, but I saw an African woman there. She had to care for her family. She was there for her kids, even her dad. And so I saw a typical African woman there who goes against all odds. I mean, in Nigeria, for example, you see a woman out there and she's more like the, the breadwinner of the family. She takes care of everything. And I saw that in her. And personally, I've had this um, conviction from way back that the difference between a man and a woman is just biology. A woman can achieve everything a woman can match a man out there. Sorry to say, we have so many odds against us, but the truth is, 
a woman is made up of so many forces. I mean, combined. Okay, take a look at her. Generally, the movie just portrayed women as yes, one aspect being strong, and the other side, the men just look at the women as them sex tools, looked at them as them people without a voice. Yeah. I saw them being marginalized, which was not fair on women generally. So I would say a typical African woman or a woman generally is a force that should be worked with. You don't have a woman in the house, then you're in trouble. And I have to say one thing. I believe for us to have good women out there, it has to start from the home. For example, in our upbringing, there is division in labor where a, a, a boy is told you can't do this because you're a man. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a home filled with men and the men know how to cook better than women because we have that upbringing. So whatever um, training you're giving to the woman, let, let it start from the home. She had the drive of her mom, like my mom wanted to do this and this. What values are we inculcating into our children? Are we already showing them that women should be man uh, marginalized by saying a man should do this and a woman should do that. Okay, imagine her being, um, imagine the husband. I think there was a scene I watched that actually got me angry where because she fired someone and it was all in the media, don't men fire women? They do. It's true. So why was her case different? So personally, I just want to say the difference between a man and a woman is just biology. Yeah. We may be weak, but we, our brains are not. Yeah. We are yeah. strong people. Yeah. Because of the event that has happened, that has happened in her life, her mother had, she was drowned in the sea and nobody had found the body. Because she was determined by the event that had happened, the bad event that had happened in, his, in her life, uh, she wanted to be the, she wanted to feel herself to be useful in the life and not to be useless. Woman should have, she should be proud of being a woman because she is useful for the society. She is the one who give, who uh, who, uh, who gives from respect to love. She she lifts up, she shapes the society, and in the picture also she was managing everything along with her family. Her husband was. Uh, he has almost lost his job, but still she was finding the opportunity for him also. So uh, she is the one who who really has a um, strength to build the family and the dream of all the members. It rests on her shoulder. So she is proud to be. She should be proud to be uh, being a woman. Um, so yeah, I learned a lot from the movie, and I think the main thing, something that really stuck, you know, um, I really noticed was that women don't have to choose between being um, carers of the home and basically killing it in society. Um, and I feel like this woman was faced with this choice of, you know, either your family or what you want to do career-wise. Um, because her husband, interestingly enough, you know, mentioned that she was fragile because she had had her nervous breakdown. But then, watching, going through the movie, you could see that that actually wasn't his concern. It was more about his career and what would happen to him, and you know how this would affect their home. So I think it's really important to mention that women shouldn't have to choose between being um, career women and also being carers in the home. And I think what's really lacking there, we could see that from the movie, was the support of her husband. And um, she just really didn't have that. But I think it's really important for us as women to have that support because when we have it, we can do both. It's not a matter of, oh, if you're you know, doing really well in your career, it means your home is suffering. She was able to do both. And I thought it was amazing that even after he pretty much left her, she still continued on in what she was doing, not because she didn't love him, not because it was important to her, but because she, it would show that balance. She could do both things. Um, and I just wanted to address your point as well about the importance of 
the home and you know really instilling these values in our children. Um, a very important scene was when in, at Adrian's funeral we could see the two boys that were listening to the speech. I thought that was so so important and so profound because it was basically showing us that you know those two boys are sitting there and they're so young but they're listening to this. They're listening to the importance of a woman in society. They're listening to her you know them speaking about her strength, about everything that she was able to contribute and do in her time and it would make them think that, oh, actually, girls aren't somehow beneath me. They're actually as powerful. They can do, you know, everything that I could do, they can do even even better. So I thought that scene was really profound. And I think family life is the most important thing when it comes to empowering women because they need to know from the minute they're born and, you know, when they have brothers and cousins who are male that they are as powerful and they can do anything that they set their minds to do. And it's really important that that encouragement comes from their parents. I mean, you can see in Nigeria how there's so many, I think it's like 13.2 million children outside of school or something like that because, you know, especially in the North because people feel like um, Sharia law is more important and ch children should learn more about Islam than, they, than going to school. So I think this thing really, really starts at home, showing our children that they can do anything and showing, you know, influencing society, influencing community so that they think differently. I think there was a scene where the janitor had told her husband that um, he should watch out for her. He didn't realize, he didn't even think to think, oh, maybe this man is just working really hard. The first thing he thought was, oh, this man must be being unfaithful. And <laughs> so, yeah, I think it's great to you know be fighting this war in the work workplace and to be fighting it in society, but it's really important that our perceptions are changing and that we're actually being brought up with these perceptions.